Hey, it's Jeff with YourLearningCareer.com. Are you excited to start building e-learning in Articulate Storyline 360, but you're not really sure where to start? Well, you are in the right place because today I'm going to show you kind of how to quickly jump into Storyline and start getting familiar with some of the things that you need to understand in order to use it effectively. So stick around, let's jump in. We're going to click on new project. So one of the nice things about Storyline is that the interface when you first go in is very familiar if you've used PowerPoint. So that really helps. And you'll see here that the default view when you first open Storyline is the story view. And that's like a big picture view of all of your slides. To go into an individual slide, I'm going to double click it. Now, if you're new to Storyline, you're going to start to see some things that maybe aren't so familiar. For example, the timeline, states, notes. And over here, you're going to see triggers and slide layers. And these are all components of Storyline that you're going to want to become familiar with. So to start getting familiar and comfortable, let's go up to slides and then content library. And this is included with Articulate 360. And what we're going to do is start out with a template. Now, right now it's showing everything, but you can narrow it down. For example, over here under type, I can select things like opening or content slides. In this example, I'm going to select light under theme, and then I'm going to select all of the slides from the vision theme. Now, of course, you can select whichever theme you want and whatever slides within that theme that you want to explore. To select all of them, I'll click on the first slide. I'll hold shift on my keyboard and then click on the last slide, and then I'll click insert slides. So now they're all in my project. And by having all of these pre-made slides, you can really start to explore the functionality of Storyline without having to build a whole bunch of slides from scratch. The first thing you want to start to understand is the timeline. You'll notice that all of the items on a slide will appear on the timeline. On this slide, for example, there's a title, a subtitle, a blue rectangle, and a picture. Now, right now on the timeline, they're all showing for five seconds. Now, if I want to, I can adjust that timing by clicking and holding the left mouse button and then bringing it in. And then I can preview it by clicking this play button on the bottom left. So by making the title a shorter time, you'll see that it disappears while everything else remains for the full five seconds. Now I'm going to bring it back to five seconds. And if I right click, there's an option to show until end. And I'm going to select that so that it matches the other objects. Now over here under triggers, there are only player triggers right now. There's a next button and a previous button that are automatically added by Storyline. Now, if I put this in preview mode, you can see what the next and previous buttons look like in this project. And of course, you can always customize these. To do that, you'll go up to player. And then if you click color and effects, you're going to see several options for customizing, including colors, the font, and the style. But I'm going to leave them the way they are right now. Since this is the first slide, I really don't need a previous button. So to remove this, I'll double click the base layer down here. And then this slide properties window will come up. And I can just deselect the previous button here. And then I'll hit OK 
and now it's just the next button. A couple other things I want to show you on the timeline are the icons here. Sometimes as you're working on several objects on a slide, they can get in the way of each other. Uh, so that is where you can click the eye icon to hide things. And then there's also this little lock icon, which you can use to lock them into place so they can't move. All right, so next I want to go to this slide because I want to take a closer look at triggers. This slide has several triggers on it. So what's a trigger? A trigger is basically an action that happens as a result of something else. So it's like if I click on X, then Y will happen. So on this slide, the triggers are related to the menu. Basically, when you click on any one of these items, the triggers are set up to jump to a particular slide. Now, right now, they all say to jump to the next slide. But as you build out your project, you're probably going to have specific slides that you'll want them to jump to. To update a trigger, you'll double click it and then click on next slide. And then I can change which slide it's going to jump to. And in addition to the action, you can also change the when. So right now it's set to when the user clicks, but that can be changed as well. Now that's a really simple example, but there are a lot of different things you can do. So you can see here a lot of the different triggers available, things like show layer, hide layer, play media, pause media, pause the timeline, go to a link. So there's a lot of different things you can do with triggers. Now something else I wanted to show you is notice over here in the scene area. So initially when they all go to the next slide, you'll see the slides over here are in order, in a line. But if I make this one jump to slide 12, look at it now. So now it branches. And in story view, we can see it even better. So it starts out going in order, and then you can see when we get to that menu slide, it branches. So this story view is really helpful, especially when you are doing a lot of branching. Now let's go back to the menu slide and I want to show you something else, the concept of states. So if I put this into preview mode, you'll see that when I hover over any of these menu items, there is a blue highlight. This is done with states. Now let's go back to the slide and you'll see down here next to timeline, you'll see states. I'll click on states and you can see here that each menu item has two states, normal and hover. To edit a state, you just click on edit states and then you can make changes to what happens when you hover. Going back to triggers, let me show you a couple other things. So one, if you want to remove a trigger, it's really easy. You can just disable it by clicking here next to it or you can just delete it. You can either right click or there's a delete icon that you can press after selecting it. And then to add a trigger, you'll click on the object that you want to create the trigger for. So in this case, I'll click on the picture and next I'll click on create trigger and then I'll put in my actions. So triggers are definitely a key piece in using Storyline and you will be using them a lot. Now luckily, as I said, they're very easy to add, delete, and edit. Another key feature that you'll need to understand and use are layers. Let's take a look at how those work. So on this slide, there are several triggers, as you can see, and then it also has several layers. So layers are a great way to build out different things on a slide without having to create a new slide. And let me show you what I'm talking about in preview. So as you can see, this slide is a scenario. So notice what happens when I click here. The character changes her pose, her facial expression. And then the same thing happens when I click the other buttons. 
So each one of these is a layer. Now let's go see how this interaction was created. All right, so this is oval one, and you can see it has a trigger to show a layer when it is clicked. And the layer is called consequence zero one. And you can see the layers down here under slide layers, and you can see that it has the picture of the character thinking. When I double click the layer, I'll get some visibility options like hide other slide layers. And that's what is selected for this layer. And that's because I only want one layer at a time to show. And then I can also hide the objects on the base layer, but in this case, I want them to stay. So I'm gonna leave this as is and close it. Now looking at the other layers, you can see that consequence 02 is the one where she's happy and consequence three has the angry character. To add a layer, I'll click on add new layer and I'll give that a name. Uh, and then I can select a different character pose. Now to add the character, what I'll do is I'll go up to insert and then I'll select character. So this character is called Christy. So I'll select her and then I can pick another pose or expression and click insert. So then I can crop and I can resize her to make her match the other ones. And then I'll just place her here on the slide. All right, so since I have now created a fourth layer, I need to go ahead and create a fourth choice for this scenario. So what I'll do for that is copy the oval and text here and paste. So notice when I copied and pasted, it also copied the trigger on the other oval. And it's calling the new oval 03 oval 1 but I want it to be 04 oval. So I'm going to go into the timeline and change the name. And to do that, I just single click on the existing name and then I can type over it and replace the name. And then I also need to update the trigger. So since it copied the other trigger, I need to tell it to open the new layer. So I'm going to change consequence three to consequence four, so it'll show that new layer that I just created. If I go in and preview, you'll see when I click that fourth option, it brings up the new layer that I just created. All right, let's look at another type of slide and let's take a look at some quiz slides. So this template actually has several different quiz slides. And of course you can also add your own. And to do that, you just go up to slides and then click on the type of quiz that you want. In this case, I'm selecting free form questions. And then you can see there are a whole bunch of different types that you can add. So you you really get a lot of different choices. On this existing slide, you can see it's a multiple choice question. And when you create these from the slides menu, the layers actually come in automatically. So you don't have to sit there and create a whole bunch of correct and incorrect layers. Like these that you see here, they came along with the slide. So that is really nice. And then of course, you can go in and update them. You can update what they say, you can update the colors. And then you'll also notice there are a couple different views. So you've got a slide view and there's a form view. And usually I'll edit the question here on the slide. And then over in the form view, that's where I will indicate if there's a correct answer, that's where you can indicate that in the form view. So you'll also notice here in the form view, there's the feedback that pops up when, when they get an answer right or wrong. Um, so I can change that. I can change the incorrect And then you'll see it also changes it here in the layer. So that's really cool how it does that automatically. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you is how to publish. 
Once you've built your project and you've previewed it and everything's the way you want it, then of course you're going to want to publish it. And there are lots of different options for publishing. So for example, you can publish for web, you can publish to a video. If you have a learning management system, you can publish for that. And within the option for the learning management system, you'll see there are the various standards to select from. So whether you're publishing for SCORM or AICC or XAPI, um, you, you have those standards there when you publish for a learning management system. And then once you select how you want it published, you simply click publish. So again, I definitely recommend grabbing one of these pre-built templates, go through the different types of slides. Again, it just really helps you get familiar with the things you can do in Storyline, and it also helps you see how those things are done, how they're built. All right, so that should get you started with Articulate Storyline 360. Of course, there's lots more to learn about it, but that'll at least get you in there playing around, getting familiar with it. Now, if you want some more information, some more resources, go ahead and check out the description. I'll put some links in there for you. Also, I'd appreciate, you know, in the comments, if there are other aspects of Storyline that you'd like to know more about, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you found this helpful, I always appreciate a like. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.